teacher can ask questions because uh, while uh, we live in a world where answers are everywhere, in everybody's pocket, literally, uh, the questions are not. So I think the teacher's job is to ask the right question and observe how the learner arrives at an answer. Not correct him, not give any value, but follow the learner and then follow up with another question. In every education system, we have a curriculum. And I think one of the problems is that the curriculum tells you what is it that you have to study. But it doesn't tell you why you have to study it. If you asked, if a teacher were to look at a curriculum and say, OK, I have to teach this, but why? You will always find that the answer will be a big question somewhere. You say, I have to teach this so that the learner can answer that big question. I think the teacher's job is to convert the curriculum into its end product, the big questions, and inform the learner that these are the questions that we are going to answer. But in order to answer this big, interesting question, we need to know these things. Then the curriculum makes sense. So for a teacher to construct the question, you need to go ahead from the subject to the reason why that subject exists. Um, it, it's, not, it's not very easy, but I think with a little practice, you can get to it. This is not something new, it's just that new technologies are coming faster today than they used to come before. But it has happened in history many, many times. Uh, when uh, Plato had once commented that writing will destroy human memory. Uh, he is partly right because we have lost the ability to, for example, memorize an entire book. There was a time when human beings had that ability to memorize an entire book so that you could carry it to the next generation and, and teach it to them. When writing came, we no longer cared. When printing came, then we said, now I don't even need to preserve that one little book. It's with everybody. Um, we lost something and we gained something. There are many such examples, but the technology of today has a very peculiar, uh, peculiar consequence, I think. Uh, when you have, OK, let me give an example. When you have a gun, you can shoot things at a distance. If I took away the gun, and said, now shoot, you said, how? How can I shoot without the gun? Today's examinations are almost as absurd. Where you tell the student, give me your mobile phone, give me your computer, don't access the internet, now answer the question. It's the same as saying, give me your gun and now shoot. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I use two different kinds of assessment for the existing scientific community to accept a result you cannot invent a new test you cannot say i have created a new test and using my method students are doing very well in that test that doesn't work you have to say i have invented a new method by which my students will do very well in your test so i use the usual normal government tests and I use that to evaluate that is doing it using a minimally invasive method, is it producing a better result or not? Uh, so that's how I measure it. But at the same time, I believe that our methods of measurement need to be changed now uh, to something completely different. But then that's another story. You know, if you give computers to children, 
good things happen, always. But if you give computers to children and don't explain to their teachers what those computers are for, then the teachers get completely confused by it. The school principals get worried, what will happen if the computer breaks down or gets stolen? Will he have to pay or not? So these are things that prevent the correct use of computers. What I saw in Uruguay was very clear. The children are reading better than almost anywhere else that I've seen. Um, at their level, at that 9, 10 year old level, they're reading better. And it's obvious why, because they're constantly reading from the screen, so their reading has improved. I measured it and I've sent it for publication. But it has taken, it's not yet published, it's been nine months still struggling with the fact that how can reading comprehension improve by itself? But my numbers are saying that they have. So uh, I think in the rest of the world there is still a problem in actually understanding that learning in that generation of, of 8 to 12 year olds is happening by itself. We don't have to do anything about it. It will just carry on. <laughs>